is lesson 2.5, applying the distributive property, you should be on page 96. We have some vocabulary to start with. Two expressions that have the same value for all values of the variable are called equivalent expressions. Let's talk about that just for a second. Here would be an example of two equivalent expressions because they would have the same value no matter what I put in for the variable. Like, let's say we have 3 times x plus 2 and then 3x plus 3 times 2. Let's put a, a 4 in for x. If you put a 4 in here, you'd get 4 plus 2 is 6 and 3 times 6 is 18, so we get 18 here. If I put the 4 in over here, I get 3 times 4 is 12 plus 3 times 2, which is 6. 12 and 6 give me 18 again. Let's put a different number in there. Let's try 5. Let's see if we still get the same thing each time. 5 plus 2 over here would be 7. 3 times 7 is 21. And if I put a 5 in here, 3 times 5 is 15, and 3 times 2 is 6. 15 plus 6 is 21. That's why they call these equivalent, because even though they're written a little differently, if I put the same number in each for the variable, no matter what number I put in, I'll always get the same amount. The equation 3x, I'm sorry, the equation 3 times x plus 2 has to equal 3 times x plus 3 times 2 illustrates the distributive property. The distributive property can be used to find the product of a number and a sum or difference. This is what the distributive property looks like when we use variables. If you take the product of A and B plus C, so in other words, if you're going to multiply A with B plus C, what you would get is this statement here. You would take A times B and you would add it to whatever we get over here, which is A times C. It doesn't matter if we take A times B plus C or if we reverse it. Remember, when you multiply, you can reverse the order. If you reverse the order, just do A times B again, and we'll add that to because we have plus A times C. If it's a subtraction, the distributive property works in subtraction problems also, or subtractions the same way. If we're doing A multiplied by B minus C, we would get A times B and then minus whatever A times C is. And, and likewise, if we switch the statement around, you'd still get the same answer. We would do A times B and then minus A times C. Now that's a little abstract, so I want to show you using numbers what this would look like, and I want to show you via pictures, okay? So let's look here. They give us an example. 4 times y plus 3 is supposed to equal 4y plus 12, okay? Let me show you in pictures why I know that's true. So we're doing 4 times parentheses y plus 3. Now this picture, instead of using y, I have x's. Let me just, I'm just going to call it x instead of y. Let me show you a picture of this. Here would be x plus 3. If I take x and I take 3, there would be x plus 3. Let me put these together. So here would be an example there of x and 3. Now, obviously, I can't combine those together. They're not the exact same thing. Now, I wanted four of these. So let me get out four of them. Here's one, two. I'm putting the second one together here. There's another one. And just so you're not waiting as I'm doing it, I just paused the video and got these other ones out. There's four sets of x plus 3. Now watch what happens when I combine the things alike together. Do you see how I have four x's? And if I move these all down here, I'm going to have 12 of these all together. So I'm going to pause the video and move them so you can see it. So now I've moved all these. Can you see where I'm getting 4x plus 12 when I take 4 and multiply it with x plus 3? This is equivalent to that. And I just showed you with the picture. Now, 
obviously, I don't want to draw pictures for every one of these problems, so what's the shortcut to me going to this website, this technology site, and dragging these things around to get this? Well, here's the easy way to do it without the tiles. Okay? 4 times x is 4x plus 4 times 3 is 12, and do you see how I get the same statement using arithmetic versus drawing pictures? That's what I was trying to show you on the previous page by using the distributive property. So when we go back here, what they're trying to show you is how can I get these without drawing pictures? Well, like in this problem, I'm taking y plus 7 and multiplying it with y. So I'm going to take, let me color code, I'm going to take the y outside the parentheses, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that with the y inside parentheses, and y times y gives me y to the second power, plus, that's why I put a plus here, y times 7, let me highlight the 7, if I take y times 7, that gets me 7y. Or here, n times n is n squared, minus n times 9 is 9n, and there's the statement. Or here, 8 times 2 would give me 16, my pen will write, minus, because there's a minus sign, oops, my pen isn't writing right, 8 times n, which is 8n, so that's 16 minus 8n. You will definitely have questions in the homework today where they'll give you a statement like this and they'll ask you to apply the distributive property. Applying the distributive property means you are getting rid of the parentheses. You are multiplying through the parentheses. That's what that property, that's what this whole thing is about, okay? If there are negatives involved, we have to be a little careful, and this takes us back to lesson 2.3, uh, 2 I believe it was, where we talked about multiplying with positives and negatives. Remember, if there's a ne one negative in the problem, an odd amount, you get a negative amount, but if there's two negatives or an even amount, you get a positive. So when I distribute here, let me draw it out. If I multiply negative 2 through here, negative 2 times positive x gets me a negative 2x, which I'll highlight. Okay? And then the next, I have a positive 7 here. Negative 2 times positive 7 is negative 14. That's why they're putting minus 14 after. Okay? Minus 14 is the same as, is kind of the same thing as negative 14. I'm taking away 14. Or look at the next one. Look at our next, oop, look at our next one. Hit the wrong layer there. Negative 3y times positive 5 is negative 15y. But when I take negative 3y and I multiply by, do you see how there's a negative sign in front? So let's, we got to take that with the y. Negative and a negative is a positive, And 3y times y is 3y squared. Okay? We have to be careful when we're distributing with negatives because the signs could be changing as that's happening. Terms and coefficients. Parts of an expression that are added together, I better put, it's not just added, they could be subtracted too. If you see adding or subtracting, if added or subtracted together are called terms. Okay, so let me highlight the terms in this example. I'll use a... Uh, let's use yellow. Here are my terms. I have a term here, I have a term here, and I have a term here. The negative, or the opposite of x, the 2x and the 8, those are all called terms. Okay? Those are my terms. The number part of a term with the variable, variable part is called the coefficient. Here's how I remember coefficient. Coefficient is just the number in front of a variable. Number in front of variable, okay? 
That's what a coefficient is. Number in front of variable. Okay? So when I look at this, here are my coefficients. I'll highlight them in green. Well, negative 1 would be a coefficient. I don't see the 1 there, but it's there, negative 1x. So negative 1 is a coefficient. 2 is a coefficient. Those are my coefficients. Okay? A constant term is a number that does not have a variable. So when you look up here, 8 is a constant. Maybe I should do that in green, actually, or in blue. 8 is a constant because it's a number without a variable. And like terms are terms that have the same variable parts. And maybe I should highlight those in orange. I have like terms right here. I could add those together. Negative 1x plus 2x could be combined into 1x. All right? You are definitely going to be asked to do this in the homework. They will have you identify parts of an expression. So, and this is exactly the exact kind of problem they'll have in the homework. Identify the terms. There's one thing we've got to identify. Like terms. There's a second. Coefficients. There's a third. Constants. There's a fourth. Okay? I'll color code. Let me do first. Let's do the like terms in yellow, or I'm sorry, the terms I meant to say, terms in yellow. Well, I have um, one term, two terms, three terms, four terms. So in other words, the terms are positive 3x because the minus is actually in front of the 4, even though it says subtract, it, it's the equivalent of negative 4. That's negative 4, negative 6x, 2. This would be a good example as why I'm saying the minus in front kind of means negative. Remember the rule we learned earlier in the chapter? We could add the opposite, so watch me do that. Add the opposite, add the opposite. Do you see how this turns into a negative 4 like they're saying here? So I got to call that negative 4 in my term, and I got to call this negative 6x as my term for the same reason, okay? So let me erase those out. Those were my terms. Okay. Let's get our coefficients now. Our coefficients are the numbers. I'm sorry, like terms is next. Like terms. Are there any like terms? Uh, yes. 3x and negative 6x are alike. I could combine those together. And I'll do a negative 4 and positive 2 are alike. I could combine those together too. They're alike. They have the, either the same variables or no variables. Those are alike. Let's do coefficients next. I'm going to highlight my coefficients in orange. Okay. Coefficient means number in front of variable. I have 3 and negative 6 are my coefficients. And finally, we have to label the constants. Let me label the constants in green. Remember, constant means number without a variable. Well, negative 4 and positive 2 would be my constants. All right? You try. Pause the video, and I tell you what, why don't you try distributing for 1? Let's try quickly distributing 1, 2, and 3, and then go ahead and identify these in number 5. Okay, so when we do these, this, 2 times x is 2x, 2 times positive 3 is positive 6, 2x plus 6 is what you get when you distribute. Watch out for this one. This is like having a negative 1 in front. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Negative 1 times negative 1y is a positive 1y. Remember, negative times negative is a positive. Let's go over here. Negative 3m times m is negative 3m squared. And negative 3m times negative 5 is positive 15m. And then, let's identify in this number 5. Let's identify the terms first. Terms. Well, negative 7y is a term. 8 is a term. Negative 6y is a term and negative 13 is a term. Those are my terms. I'll put commas in between. Um, like terms. What's a like? I'll put LT for like terms. Well, negative 7y 
and negative 6y are alike. They have the same variables. But 8 and negative 13 are also alike. They could be combined together. Coefficients, that's the numbers in front of variables. I'll put co for that. Coefficients, well, negative 7 is a number in front of a variable, and negative 6 is a number in front of a variable. Those are coefficients. Finally, my constants. I'll put con for constants. Those are the numbers on, a, on their own. Positive 8 is a constant, and so is negative 13. Okay? Combining like terms. When you combine like terms, a quick way to combine like terms with variable parts is just to mentally add the numbers in front up, coefficients, numbers in front up, and then use, and just keep the variable. So, for example, if I'm going to add negative 7y and I'll add the opposite here, negative 6y, negative 7 and negative 6 add up to negative 13, and then you just keep the y. If you combine these two together, you should get negative 13y. And then if I add 8 and negative 13 together, let me add the opposite there, 8 and negative 13 is negative 5, you really ought to end up, this expression should simplify to negative 13y minus 5. That's combining like terms. Okay? You have simplified the expression. If the, if the parentheses are gone, when, so the grouping symbols disappear, and if all the like terms have been combined together, you notice these aren't alike, so I've definitely simplified my expression. And then the final part of this assignment, you'll be asked at the end to do some word problems where you're going to have to set up the equation or the statement, and it's going to include the distributive property. So when you look at this, you will notice that we have an equation being set up, and can you see the instance of the distributive property? I'm going to have to do 9 times 50 and 9 times negative r, or minus r, in order for me to get this thing set up. So I think I'm going to pause the video there. I think that's a good overview of the distributive property, obviously. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.